SEC Media Days. This is Radio Row in Nashville, Tennessee. Richard Cross, Brian Haydad, and now the Athletics Director at Mississippi State. So for most schools, it's a head football coach and three football players. We see media members floating around all over the place, but uh, an Athletics Director here today as well. Zach Selman, kind to be back with us again, and uh, you decided to come and just check it out, right? Yeah, check it out. You know, uh, have never been to the SEC Media Day and uh, want to get up here and support our guys and just take it all in. So it's been really cool, but Really good to be with you guys today. First impression from kind of walking through and, and seeing this event, it's a, a little bit of a circus. Yeah, it's a little bit like Mardi Gras, the circus all over the place and uh, a lot of moving parts. But I think it shows like in everything that you experience with the SEC, I guess the last time we were in Nashville was for uh, the men's basketball championship or tournament. And I feel like there's just more stuff that's going on. You know, the crowds are a little bit bigger. There's more passion. Uh, and that's what's really cool. I think that's what drives so many people, co- great coaches, to this league. Yeah, you're obviously a, a young guy for the position that, that you are in. But I feel like, given your career path, and we've talked in the past about working with, with Bubba and with Joe, that this was something that you were working toward. So when you get to a spot where you are in that chair in the SEC at 37 years old, does it feel like you belong? Yeah, you know, I think – you know, in life, it's always a growth. Like, you're always trying to figure it out. How can you grow all of that? I think I've been uh, prepared, and I'm so thankful for uh, both of the guys you mentioned, and Bubba and Joe, to prepare me. Uh, there is a big difference, I think, mentally when it comes to making recommendations uh, versus making decisions. And I think I've been able to, to train myself over the years, though, and have enough scenarios that, that Joe and, and Bubba both saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. It's never been about, like, I want to just be an AD. It's always been about, like, I want to go work for a great person and that checks the box big time at Mississippi State because we've got the best uh, college president in America, Dr. Keenan. But also you want to go to a place where you can make an impact. And at Mississippi State, there's a lot of great momentum that we have going on. Uh, So continue to learn, but I continue to to rely on my network all the time of, uh, hey, what would you do in this situation? But never a dull moment. I know you're an avid listener of the Thunder and Lightning every podcast. Day, every day. I appreciate that, Zach. I actually and go to bed listening to it. Like, that's how I, much I love you. Man, that's great. It's that. the this thing that puts him to puts sleep to faster sleep. than anything else. <laughs> hey, that and is so, every so boring. Day. Here we so go. you know that I have been pounding the table for the past few months about the state script, about branding as state. And so yesterday we see the reveal. I thought the uniforms looked great. I thought the helmet looks fantastic. Talk us through the process of a logo change. Yeah, and, and would it be clear, we the primary mark of, of campus or of institution is still uh, the same mark. You know, we wanted to look at our, our secondary marks and uh, how we can continue to evolve. Look at the history of, of our marks. It's changed quite a bit. Uh, and wanted to listen to our student athletes, wanted to listen to our stakeholders, our fans, and then also clearly work with our apparel partners, and specifically in this case, Adidas, what we can do to make sure – uh, we honor the history, we honor the tradition, um, but also make sure that we're uh, nationally relevant to the, the people we're trying to recruit, we're trying to bring to Starkville, Mississippi. So I think our team, it was a collaborative effort. Really appreciate everybody on campus being on board, um, but really excited about what we can continue to do. You should have seen the ditty that he did yesterday. I, was really happy. I mean, he was up, you know, I was fist heel, was heel clicking well, and the whole deal. We almost had Brian come be the model of the jersey, but – he, he, didn't sent have me, one big he, he sent me straight to voicemail. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, I know there's one that fits me. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see him? Did you see the picture? No. Oh, I'll, 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 oh. after we get done, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll show you that. So, yeah. so Palmer Home Radiothon, which is the charity that Super Talk Mississippi supports, we made a season-long bet a year ago, and it was cumulative wins versus losses for Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So who do you think won that? State had a good year last year. And uh, so I spent the first hour of the show in a state football jersey. Second hour of the show in a basketball good? jersey. Yeah. And then the uh, third hour I, in, a, in a baseball jersey. Didn't it feel good? I'm, t- I'm telling you, he looks so natural, too. He just needs to just come on over. We, we could use yeah. your money, too. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> we, we got a place for that. Speaking of myths, <laughs> yeah, we got a few of those floating around. So let me ask you this about, about Scripps State and State, NC State, Michigan State, Arizona. There's a lot of states out there. Can Mississippi State brand itself as state? Yeah, there's some challenges that come along with that. You know, when you look at the the trademarking of it, uh, for us it's going to be an evolution of how we get there. And, again, we'll have to work with a lot of different people. 
I think for us, it's how do we tell our story better? There's a great story of Mississippi State. When you look at the players, I look at, you know, just watching the Super Bowl this year, how many of our guys are playing in that game? When you look at what we've been able to do in basketball across the board, uh, you, there's a there's a great story to tell there. So I think the, the state script is part of that, part of the evolution of the way the games change, the way the players uh, play differently now, the way that we train differently, a little different than how, how we uh, maximize and utilize our marks. So we'll constantly work at it and understand, look, we understand the national uh, landscape, what the other things are, but the best teams, the best organizations will always be inside out. And that's how we'll look at this. We'll make sure that we're taking care of Mississippi State and uh, we'll see where the chips fall from there. You mentioned a second ago, kind of, kind of struck me when you said that, a little bit different being in um, an advisory role than a decision-making role, when, when ultimately the decision is yours. Um, I know when you came in, you knew that baseball was a big deal at Mississippi State. My guess is seeing it up close and personal, you, you, it went to a different level uh, in terms of understanding that. I, I'm just curious about the evaluation process that, that you had to go through at the end of the season to, to say that, look, Chris Lamonis is our guy, and we believe in the direction that he's headed. We believe in the direction the program's headed versus, frankly, what online community, message board community, you, you see that, oh, you got to make a change. And it was a national championship two years ago. How do you balance all that and kind of process all of that? Yeah, you know, I think it, it you you evolve and you learn, and you know, it happens to be so our oldest daughter – uh, and I were watching this in Shark Week, if you don't know, on that yeah. geo. So sharks, you know, thicker skin. I've learned early on, we've got to have, in this role, you've got to have thick skin. And you've got to block out the noise and really evaluate it from your your own perspective in an objective way. And there, there's some uh, qualitative things that go along with that. What's the best for our program? And you look at Coach Lamonis, who have got full faith. He understands where we haven't met the expectations of our program, you know. And he's kind of the first to say that. And he, yeah, we've had very open and honest conversations, but you look at a coach who uh, has won a national championship, and once you win, winning in anything is hard, but winning in a national championship in this league uh, or go through the, se the season we had that year in this league and then win a national championship is super hard. So I think it's now retweaking some things of how do we get back there. We've shown that we can get there. Now, what are some things programmatically that we need to get back there? So I, our coaching staff, um, they, they want to win. Our kids want to win, and that's one of the things that – I uh, was really proud of, if, if of anything in our baseball season, was our team never quit on effort. Every every game they played, they gave effort. They continued to, you know, lose and start. I was on the team at, at Wake Forest where we lost a lot early. I actually beat at Ole Miss, so that was fun, one one game. And it's hard. It's <laughs> that, hard. Was the, that was the rain game. Rain game. Riley Skinner was the quarterback at Wake Forest at the time. And we just ran the ball and tried to stay away from Patrick Willis. Well, you know what Ole Miss did during the break, right? You, you've heard the legend of what happened no. that night. So Ed Ogeron was the coach. He, so they went in, in. They had the indoor practice facility. And to keep them loose, they scrimmaged for an hour and a half. Full contact scrimmage. I swear to you, I'm not making that up. Jeez. We you sat, wonder why they were, you were able to run it on them yeah, like that. Yeah, we sat in the, in the locker room and had, like, little Debbies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody got the – is there a mom with some orange slices? Can we, Seriously. Uh, it was like we, – I remember that. We were sitting there soaking wet. I mean, we, we didn't have God, all these equipment right, managers. Crazy that night. Uh, we had we wore our same socks that we were warming up in, just soaking wet, and we had some little W's and went back out there. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks for setting that up, Coach O. Just uh, you know, if you have any advice for a coach, don't scrimmage at halftime during a game. No, that's not, not th good. Pass that along to Coach Arnett, Arnett, please. Just make sure. He, I don't think you would, but you know. Hey, speaking of other places, um, not to make this about OU, but in, it, you've been there. You've seen that program. Obviously, a, a wildly successful athletics program. In terms of the transition to the SEC, where are they ready as a department, and where is it going to take a little bit of time to kind of figure things out? Yeah, I think if you know, that's a question that you know a handful of people have asked, and and I think the measure of the SEC one is you know we've got a, a great leadership group and Commissioner Sankey, but on the result is it's the national championship. It's like if you look at football, you look at where, uh, where basketball has been, it's the tip of the spear nationally. So I think every program that Oklahoma has that is there, you know, uh, Coach Gasco, Gasso has done a great job with the softball program. Coach Kinler, the gymnastics, women's gymnastics coach, has done a great job. So I think that's the standard. And if you fall below that, then you've got to work. How can you rebalance some things to make sure that you get up to that? So uh, it'll be a great addition. We've already got some unbelievable competition in this league, but having Texas and Oklahoma will be great.
Let's wrap it up. we got like 30 seconds here. What are you most looking forward to this football season? You know, just experiencing it all. You know, I've been able to experience basketball and baseball and tennis, all of that, but just to see the junction and to hear the cowbells, to see the tailgating. You know, I'm just so excited to uh, experience a game day. I've heard great things about it, but until you experience it, uh, that's one of the things I'm most excited about. You're always kind with your time. We appreciate you Thank stopping you, by and uh, hope this is a good day for you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Zach Selman, Athletics Director at Mississippi State. Take a quick time out. We've got more coming up with you. It's SEC Media Days from Nashville and Pearl River Resort. Resort. Pearl River Resort Studios, easy for me to say. Our coverage brought to you by Gentile Apparel. We'll be back right after this.